Hi everyone, my name is Bogdan and welcome to Accurate Dicta channel, helping you to navigate in the world of automotive repairs, maintenance and reviews. I was planning to make a video on exterior car wash sometime, and I recently got a request from Thomas, Christmas Carols 2162. Thanks Thomas. So here goes. Warning, this video will be a total overkill for most people, as it actually takes a lot of time to properly wash and dry a car, including wheels. And I just wanted to say up front, if you are currently using so-called soft touch or any similar type of automatic car wash that uses any kind of brush that touches your car's paint, you should stop right now and never use it again, if you care about your clear coat and paint and want it to last for years. And since touchless washes are only somewhat effective in a situation when you have a mildly dirty car, or perhaps just want to get the dust off, the only proper way to wash your car is the good old two-bucket method. I will also use a little trick, an upgrade to a regular hose, a sort of a foam cannon that will really make things easier and more effective. Another thing I wanted to say is that this video only covers proper exterior wash and dry from top to bottom. It's not an entire detailing picture that includes decontaminating clear coat and paint with a clay bar, waxing or any other type of sealing. This will be covered in other videos, as well as there will be a separate video on interior cleaning, engine bay cleaning, etc. As you may know, having a black car is a nightmare to maintain clean and swirl free, but I do what I can. Here's a basic set of things you will need for a proper car washing and drying. Links to everything I use are in the description. Buckets 1 and 2. Don't forget to rinse them off before filling them with water. Bucket grid guards 1 and 2. These need to be rinsed as well. Wash mat 1 for car paint and 1 for wheels. Preferably for car paint you want to use a natural sheep wool mitt. You can also use a microfiber towel for washing the wheels instead of a mitt. Sometimes it's more convenient. I rinse them as well. Wheel brush. I also use a woolly to reach those tight rim spaces and brake calipers. Car wash shampoo. The less friction there is between the car clear coat or paint and your mitt, the less damage you will do to it. So the foamier your shampoo is, the better. I used the most foamy car wash shampoo I could get, Honey Dew from Chemical Guys. Optional, Foam Cannon. This really makes things easier and quicker. For drying, I find proper microfiber towel the most effective. For a car of this size, I would suggest to have at least two. I also suggest having a couple of extra large thick microfiber towels to buff off the car with some sort of a spray wax or a synthetic car paint lubricant. I use either Meguiar spray wax or Chemical Guys synthetic lubricant. And of course, separate microfiber towels for the wheels and bottom trim, which are most dirty, even after the wash. Another optional thing is the actual car wax. You can use any quality Carnuba wax or good quality synthetic wax like I do, Meguiar's. But that's a topic for a different discussion. I also use some tire dressing. I don't like the super wet look on my tires, but you pick up a spray you prefer. Of course, it's going to be more effective if you use a pressure washer, but I don't have one, so I use a regular garden hose. However, the foam cannon upgrade allows me to create a higher pressure, so it's somewhere in between the regular garden hose pressure and the pressure washer. Let's roll! If possible, have your car in a shaded area. Although I generally do not advise to wash the car outside, as it may be windy and dusty. Or in a wash bay, where you have access to water, water disposal and a hose. Although it's kind of obvious, but I thought it's worth mentioning that before proceeding with washing, make sure you have all your windows and doors shut securely, as well as your trunk or lift gate and moonroof or panoramic roof. Oh, and another obvious and yet important thing. Check the weather forecast. You don't want to spend hours washing your car just to get out into the rain or snow, or if it happens the next day. Since for me it's such a long process and the place where I wash is about 20 minutes away from my home, I usually make sure that there won't be any precipitation for at least the next 4-5 days. That way I don't waste my time. Ok, let's start with rinsing and filling the two buckets. 
I'm gonna use the white one for clear water to rinse the mitt and the silver one for foamy water to dump the clean mitt into before touching the car with it. The car shampoo I use is really concentrated, so I don't use much. Then just foam it with high pressure water from the hose. I will also be using my foam cannon, but you don't have to if you don't have it. Here's how it works. Just remove any garden hose nozzle and screw on the water gun part. That will allow you to control the spray. Now assemble the foam cannon. Pour some shampoo and add water. This gun has different foam settings, but I always use the thickest one, as I want nice foam. The car has traveled 800 kilometers or 500 miles during our last trip. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of bugs on the front. So despite I usually start with the wheels, let's rinse the whole car first. Then soak the whole car and especially the front bumper, hood and grill. Let it soak for 2-3 minutes, then rinse everything off. That will soften some of the loose dirt and bugs and encapsulate those dust and dirt particles and will remove some of them with the first rinse. Now let's take care of that front. Soak it with foam again and start washing. A rule of thumb is to start washing from the top point and then go down to the bottom. Since my bumper is not painted with a clear coat, I'm gonna use a different mitt for it. Go in small steps like a meter by half meter areas or 3 by 2 feet between mitt rinses and dumping the mitt into the foam bucket. Done! Much better! Let's carefully check the paint for roughness now which will indicate if you removed everything. If you haven't removed all the dirt and bugs, just repeat the whole process until you do. Let's rinse it now. Let's move on to the wheels. I do that because I don't want the car to sit wet until I wash it before I wash the wheels, but rather the other way around. It's much easier to drive the wheels after. I'll use the same water in the buckets just because there wasn't too much contamination on the front. And remember, you would usually start with the wheels, so that water would be clean anyway. First, use the big brush to wash the tire and outside of the rim, and also whatever you can reach. I also scrub the wheel wells. Often they are dirty, and you don't want a clean car and clean wheels look just to ruin it with dirty looking wheel wells. Then I use the wheel woolly to reach those tight spaces, go behind spokes and in between the wheels and brake calipers. I think these are really good looking rims, do you agree? Now, the level of craziness may vary from a person to person. If you are really nuts, like myself, you would really go into it, hard. I'm moving on to the next wheel until all the wheels are done. Just leave them wet. No use in wasting time to dry them now, as you are going to spray the whole car multiple times. There we go. Now it's the car's turn. I'm gonna dump the water in the buckets after washing the wheels, as you never want the dirt from the wheels to go into your car's paint. And rinsing buckets with grid guards. And refilling them with water. Adding some shampoo in one and foam in it. Now I soak the whole car with my foam cannon again and start washing from top to bottom. First, the roof. 
then the middle of the car, including door frames and the lift gate. Obviously, it's going to be much easier and quicker if you have a sedan. Now, I purposely leave any windows out, as glass is much more difficult to scratch, so I want to leave the cleanest water for the paint. Now, moving on to the bottom. It really helps if you have good lighting. That will allow you to cover everything and not miss some spots which you're going to regret later, as that ruins the whole clean look. Remember to rinse and dump the mitt into foam often. I've already washed the front, so there's no point in going back, but you would typically do it at the same time. The last thing to wash is the windows. Doesn't matter in which order. And we are done! Last step I take is I remove my foam cannon and just use a free-flowing water to rinse the car from top to bottom. That allows maximum beating and removes a lot of water that you don't have to dry later. Obviously, that is also a very good indicator on how contaminated your glass and paint is. The better water beads, the cleaner it is. If it doesn't bead at all, or beads poorly, the area is highly contaminated as is the case with my lower door panel areas. In fact, if I run my fingers lightly against the paint, I can distinctly feel how rough the surface is, despite I just washed it. It's no surprise, as the last time my car was decontaminated and went through the paint correction and polishing process was 4 years ago, so that is long gone. Topic for another video. Once you rinse the car, don't let it sit and dry itself as you will get water spots because of the salts and elements in the water, unless you're using effective water filtration, which basically turns your water into salt-free, which is not cheap. I suggest popping the gas hatch to remove any water from there, as well as pop the hood and open it to remove all the water from there as well. But you don't have to. Start drying in the same sequence as you wash the car, except leaving the wheels to almost the last step and use some type of lubricant I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Sometimes you would need to go over the same spot several times. But don't use too much pressure. In fact, try not to use any pressure at all. Remember, you are just getting rid of any moisture. You want to avoid rubbing any remaining contaminants into the paint. That will cause swirls or so-called love marks. You might not see them right away, but they will surely appear in the direct light or sun. Once completed drying the paint, dry the windows. In my case, because water usually gets into the mirrors and keeps dripping out of them, I get water spots all over the front door sides. So what I do is I get as much of microfiber towel I can behind the mirrors and below the mirrors in the cracks where water is usually gathering. A couple of times should suffice. Since time goes, it evaporates on its own especially if you are cleaning the interior after, which gives the water additional time to evaporate. Then it's the wheel's turn. As you can see, my rotors have completely turned brown because of the rust. That's normal, unless you have carbon fiber rotors, of course. The rust will be removed by the brake pads in a minute as soon as you start braking after. This will create some rusty dust on the wheels, but you can buff it off quickly with a dry towel. You want to get rid of as much moisture as you can from the wheels, because once they start rotating again, that will throw any remaining water around and create water spots and drips, which is not pretty. Finally, apply tire dressing if you use one. And never spray the dressing over the tires, you will likely spray onto the wheels and car paint as well, which you want to avoid, obviously. So I would spray it onto the applicator itself. Looks final, right? Wrong. There's still some moisture in the door jams. Here. Here. I would use the same quality microfiber towel to dry these places. And the final step would be the bottom inner door sides and the body sides they touch when they're closed. Paper towel and an old microfiber towel should do. And don't forget about that tailgate as well. And one final look around to see if you missed anything. That's the result. See? Easy. 
and it only takes from an hour to two hours if you're not filming, as I am right now. I will create a mini-series playlist and call it Make Acura Clean Again. So all of the washing, drying, cleaning and detailing videos will go in there. I hope it will be useful to you no matter what car you drive though. If you also think that I'm just cray cray, let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe and bell buttons for more videos on this channel. As always, drive safe, use your turn signals and remember, anything is possible with the right tools and motivation. See you next time!